G'day guys, welcome back to Spaces Arcade for a very special episode because today guys we're going to talk about the fact that Pimple FX is now on Steam yes. and also there has been uh, some improvements in the cabinet mode area and this video I'm going to focus on that element I've got it all set up here on the cabinet and I'm pleased to say that we have a start we have a start of uh, some good cabinet settings but we're a long way off I think all the features that we would like to see as cabinet owners but it's a great start so today we're going to focus on what is there what's not there we'll talk a little bit about what they could put in um, I know the last video we talked about having APIs and I still think and I hope that they're going to have an API to allow other third-party programs to hook in and provide extra functionality especially around some of the custom hardware guys like that seems like the obvious choice to support all of that stuff through you know if it's going to use the direct output framework used off um, if they were able to hook into an API and, and be able to use that, then Zen doesn't have to really worry about any of that, right? Like, it's all taken care of by those third-party tools that already exist. Uh, same thing with DMD X, EXT in terms of getting the, uh, you know, support for real, real DMD. So really looking forward to see what Zen does do in this space moving forward. Uh, we are a niche uh, population and so, you know, I think we should be thankful that, that Zen's putting it in there. But on the same side of it, I do feel that it's a, a great marketing uh, exercise and um, opportunity uh, more so for Zen to have their beautiful game working with all the flashing bells and whistles of a full-size cabinet. Um, certainly entices people, I think, to 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 want to play. And playing in this format is very different than playing on a controller. And we will talk about those things as well. The other exciting thing, guys, is that um, I have been waiting for a long time now to play the original tables that Zen has created. I've always loved the look of them. I've loved the effects, you know, all the way back from the very first tables that they've created. But I was, you know, the floaty physics of Pinball FX3 because uh, they didn't have the, the full, you know, the Williams physics uh, ported over there at that time. It put me off. It always put me off playing them. Um, and now we have good physics uh, on those beautiful custom tables. And they've released so many of them already um, on the launch now with Steam that... Uh, I've just been having a blast guys. I've been having a blast playing the originals and to me this is a beautiful way to play it. There are some things that are, that are different of course in playing this on a desktop type scenario or on a normal TV screen uh, and again but we'll, we'll go through that. So because of all of that what I'm going to commit to doing is I am going to rank, I am going to rate every Zen custom pinball machine that they have table that they've made look i'm talking about machines already because it's in a cab but every custom table uh so that includes their originals and all their licensed um themed tables that they've created i'm going to rate them and i'm going to rate them on these criteria i'm not going to do a one out of ten because it's going to be real subjective <laughs> based on just my thoughts uh, but each of these areas will get a rating from one to ten we're going to do overall theme the table, atmosphere, layout realism in terms of if it could be really a real pimple machine or not, table artwork, animations, graphical effects, lighting, DMD, music, sound effects, call outs, flow, shot interest, challenge, physics feel, fun factor, replayability and a spacey's X factor that I'm going to just either bump it up a little bit if I feel it it deserves it guys because it has something special now that's quite a list right? but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some playthrough and you'll get to see how pinball FX uh, looks as it's playing on the cabinet I'm just going to give you that cabinet view of me playing it and uh, we're going to go through each one of those games and you'll see that view you'll see that experience and you will hear what my ratings are across all of those areas to give a total score 
each episode that I do after that where I cover another table, it will be added to the overall score and ultimately you will see every single table ranked, at least from my experience, guys. So I hope you look forward to that. If you haven't subscribed, good time to subscribe now to look forward to seeing all of those tables coming up. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work hard, guys, to, to get through all those because there's a whole ton to get through. But I'm super excited to do it because um, I'm just enjoying playing it on this format. So, so anyway, guys, um, look out for those videos coming up straight after these, this one. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to sort of talk through the cabinet mode features that Zen's put in here. Um, and we're going to start with, I'm going to sort of work my way through the machine and think about all the features that potentially we'd like to see and what's there and what's not, right? So if we start at the very top in terms of a topper, and obviously I don't actually have a, um, a screen for a topper, but a lot of cab users do. And I think it's something that Zen should include, all right? So as we talk about what's actually in there, they have got support for showing a back glass. Uh, and also a DMD, which we'll get into in more, more details in a minute. But I think they could just add that extra screen setup, and I don't think that would be a huge job for them to do. Just add another another screen, do the box thing, and you can you know take a, a directory where you can chuck up topper images. Ideally, it would be nice if you could do images as well as video, because I know some people have video that would need to repeat, um, and that's sort of quite a nice sort of feature to have as, as a topper currently. They don't support that. Moving down to the back glass, guys. Now, again, I, I know everyone's probably looking forward to active back glasses as part of cabinet mode. Um, and I'm not, I'm, either way here, I'm sort of thinking it'd be nice if Zen did it natively. I'm not sure how hard or difficult that would be. It'd probably be a lot of work. Again, some form of API where they could, where cabinet, guys like us could actually use B2S server uh, to, you know, to, to have back glasses working um, might be a, a quicker way for them to provide that level of support. At the moment, they don't, still not providing the actual graphics either for the back glasses. So it's going to be a community effort. You got to fill it up into the, the folder that they've got there. You got to name it by the right table names. It does come up and tell you the table name uh, where your yeah, well, artwork is missing, but it is a manual process, guys, and obviously it means that people need to sort of download packs from the community. That's just how it is at the moment. I'm hoping to see some improvements in that space. As I said, the best thing would be an API out to B2S server and actually have active back classes if they can't do it natively. Um, other than that, though, uh, you can see <laughs> this was my uh, pretty quick, poor attempt just in mid-journey to create a Kong back glass because of course as soon as the table's released there's no back glass available. <laughs> so anyway, that's a, a temporary thing. Moving down from there, uh, we've got the DMD and I have a real DMD here. Again, no native support currently uh, from Zen for real DMDs. Um, again, I think that's best through the API and then through something like DMD EXT and that would allow support for for the, um, the DMD. Um, what I've done at the moment, as you can see, is I've just, I've actually used DMD XT to just actually chuck a, a picture uh, up on the screen there in terms of Zen Studio. So that was just a manual thing I did out before running the table, just so I didn't have it blank there. My setup, of course, is a little different to some other people's setups where they'll have a LCD DMD. And because I wanted to show all the variations as part of this video, guys, I did go out and bought this little 7-inch DMD uh, for that purpose. And to show just how, the, especially the new DMDs, guys, that Zen, Zen is releasing now with these latest tables, the new ones are full of graphics, they're nice and colourful, lots going on on them, and I think they're just superb. I think they're fantastic when they're shown on this little screen here. Now, I'll just deviate a little bit in relation to talking about all these features in terms of the screen and, and the uh, real DMD. A couple of things. Uh, first of all, for all you guys that do play uh, on a desktop and you know play full screens, 16x9, um, and you've got your DMD up in the left-hand corner and you're looking at that table view, it's 
always been a challenge for me when I played that way to see what's going on in the DMD. And in fact, some of these new DMDs even make that harder because there's, there's so much more going on. And so the logical thing was to try and get the DMD as close in as possible. Now again, on the desktop view, it'd be nice if that DMD could come over into the middle for, for desktop players, I think, just to, to have it up and up and down in alignment because going to the side is it's just weird. Um, but for us cabinet guys, uh, either you've got a cabinet, you've already got a DMD stuck in the middle. I think if you've got it up, you know, where a normal DMD is, then you're going to be sweet anyway. Of course, I didn't have the room. I wanted to keep my real one there. So I've stuck it on here and I've stuck it on the back of, just hung it. This is just a standard sort of seven inch screen. I've hung it on this um, deflector uh, that stops the reflection from the real DMD hitting the table. Obviously now I do have a bit of reflection from this seven inch, but it's nowhere near as blinding as the real DMD guy. So anyway, a bit of a, a long explanation about, about that setup, but um, I will say that having this right on the glass here is so good, it's so good. You're playing and you're just looking and it's right there and you can see it and it, and it adds to the game. And I'll say to Zen, keep doing this, keep doing these really cool DMDs on here, it's so much more impactful on a cabinet setup than it is, you know, with the same thing sitting to the side. And I think even if it was up at the front on a normal screen, this just, I don't know, guys, I just feel like it's all, it's, it's, it's a part of the game, which is why actually when I bought the real DMD, um, why I love that so much, and especially the color uh, pin to DMD, which I've got in this setup. Uh, I love it so much because it's it's so bright and so that brightness, just the flashing of it and all the rest of it for just normal DMDs is so awesome. Be nice to have both, uh, again, through the API for the real one. And uh, and of course, with these real complex, um, well, not complex as such in terms of um, uh, graphics, it's more about the resolution, right? With these high resolution ones, it'll be difficult for them to translate. They still could translate to the to the real DMD, but we're talking, you know, it's only what 128 by whatever it is, 16 dots. So it would, you know, compress down quite, probably quite badly. It'd be nice to just do both. Now, because of that, one thing I did notice is that if you run the older tables, when you look at the DMD of the older tables, the old black and white ones that mimic the sort of 90s machines, they don't look very good on here <laughs> at all. I'm so used to seeing those on a nice real DMD guy. So it's a bit of a trade-off there. You get really nice for the new ones. The old ones don't look so good on a little seven inch. Uh, again, some of you guys might have a, a larger uh, screen anyway um, for your LCD DMD and that might look a little better. But for me, there's, there's no, you know, there's no substitute for the real thing for those 90s. So look, I think I've got the best of both worlds and, and, and hopefully you guys can sort of see that. You won't see the luminosity differences and stuff, uh, which is one of the big impact areas um, of a real DMD, but you know, through the camera, you just won't get that. You're just gonna have to take my word for it that the real DMD like punches, it punches through. All right, so enough about that. If we peek in behind the side of the DMD, we've got some speakers there, so it's a good, time to talk about speaker support uh, in the new version and so far I can see that it's really just standard stereo um, it works with my you know the 2.1 sound uh, channel works fine uh, someone on Steam actually said it, uh, in one of their reviews that it was it was crazy good because it was um, causing all their exciters to go off and I don't know how they're doing that uh, and I don't think it's supported so I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, ultimately what we'd like to see is Zen support a seven channel sound output and so what you would have is your front two speakers 2.1 effectively two front speakers here and your, and your uh, sub and then you have four exciters when you have a spare channel left over but you have four exciters uh, and those exciters then get kicked off. Um, this is your surround sound force feedback, poor man's doff as they call it. Uh, but those exciters then get triggered um, on, on sort of table events. Flippers, you know, hitting the flippers is gonna vibrate the size of the table like it does uh, when you're using other software like VPX and, uh, and, um, and their surround sound feedback support. 
And, you know, when bumpers kick off and stuff, if bumpers are up high, then the back ones go, if the bumpers low, then the front ones would go. And then all the other sound effects, the ball rolling and stuff, can be simulated through that uh, 7.1 support. So that, to me, probably is something that needs to be in built uh, more. Um, is something that Zen supports natively. It would be good to see in the software to do that. So we don't have that either uh, currently. So moving on from there, I think we would talk about more broadly again, more DOF effects. So I've got a shaker motor, I've got a wiper motor, I've got a knocker in here, and I've got five duplicated lights, that five up there, five on the play field here, real lighting on the side, the Cree lighting that I love um, and enjoy so much in a cabinet mode because it's everything's flashing, going crazy when you're playing uh, VPX with uh, DOF support. So again, API support DOF guys and uh, we would have all of that, all of that functionality if they managed to do that. Um, on from there, the whole cabinet itself, of course, one of the key things in any cabinet uh, setup is nudge. And nudging um, is something that I, uh, I still still do even though when it doesn't support it I'm still moving the I'm trying to move the cabinet guys that's a good sign because you're getting into the you know getting into the game and it's like oh I just want to nudge it it's like oh, I can't nudge it so I have to remember to use um, uh, the magnesite buttons which I've got on the side here and I drop down and do a, a, a nudge nudge now it seems like when you're doing the button press like that you get one nudge danger second nudge tilt right like that's it so there's no subtlety to the to the nudge. Uh, it's it's definitely not as good. Clearly, support for an accelerometer uh, would be good. Now, again, how can Zen do that across all the different pieces of hardware for accelerometers? I mean, there's not that many of them out there, to, to be fair. But uh, that's something that I think they should carefully consider uh, if they can do again some form of support through API for that to support the different hardware, but it's so important, guys. You know, you're playing pinball, it, it, this, it's a, it's a, you move the machine, that's part of the game. That's part of the game, especially when it's in a cabinet. So, can't stress that enough. Uh, moving around from that, I think we've covered all the other elements. Oh, I've got some flashes too in the back, but that's all part of the DOF uh, setup. So going from there, we're going to talk about um, the front buttons and the buttons in general that are available currently in cabinet mode. And right now, it's a bit of a weird, weird setup. So mine's been detected as a controller uh, and not keys. And it's you've got different options to flick the buttons around, but you can't select which ones are against which ones. And I don't, I'm sorry to say, I don't understand why you do this, because ultimately the best way to, to do it um, is for people to be able to, you know, click a particular button on the controller and then obviously hit the button, the real life button, so that it just links up, right? We just, we, we need that custom control. Uh, otherwise we don't, can't sort of link everything up. Having said that, I can, I played it out of the gate. I could play it with the main um, launch button, the flippers, the nudge buttons on the side, all of those work, uh, but I can't do anything else. I can't change cameras, although camera changing, uh, I think uh, once you've got it dialed in, guys, then that, you know, you don't really need, need it on a button, but it's, it, it would be, it would be nice. I guess that leading on from there, because I think that covers all the control sets or other, of course, um, oh, you know, oh, we didn't talk about the plunger, actually. So the plunger is, of course, another, another element. And, and usually that's sort of part of a, a kit with your accelerometer as well. But no plunger is a little disappointing. Uh, again, takes you away from the feel of uh, a real life cabinet. So yeah guys, um, from there I think what we'll do is we'll talk about, I'm just trying to make sure that I've covered all the elements across the machine, the hardware and so forth that could be supported. I think we're now going to get more into the software. And I'm going to start straight away just to let you guys know that there is um, no support currently for command line firing off tables direct. Uh, so you can't 
currently fire them off out of Pimble FX um, or, uh, or Pinup uh, Popper if you're using that. So it's something that I believe Zen will be looking at implementing at some point as it was in uh, Pimble FX 3 and 2. So no fr direct front end access. Uh, there is uh, someone that I neglect to remember their name in the uh, in the forum, in the Zen, Zen forums for Pimble FX in the cabinet section who has created some um, some hot, hot key scripts so that basically uh, you can compile those and then it will, it, you know, when, when it runs it effectively is pressing keys for you to get to the table. I, I personally don't like those sort of setups and it's also a bit, a bit of a challenge because if the tables move around in terms of the sorting orders and I think there's some problems there already, uh, then you know it's going to move the cursor down, hit a button, and then probably get the wrong table. And then as new tables are added, who knows? It's not not a, it's not a long term solution, guys. So we need the we need definitely need the command solution. But great job for the guy that's done that already to at least get people um, started if they want to set that up on their cabinets. Um, so that's yeah, that's firing up into the table uh, again. You would get around all the current problems that you have in this setup in terms of going into the main menu and navigating around. And of course, you can't navigate around. I can't set some buttons to do that. Uh, so you, again, you're sort of stuck using keyboard and mouse to do that. Like front end would solve that command line, bang, straight into a table out, straight back into the new table out. All good. Um, so at the moment, yeah, it's a bit, bit messy. You've got to go and select things by the mouse. When you do go get, go in there though, you will see the cabinet mode section and the cabinet mode section now has an easy way to dial in the back glass and also the DMD. Now I'll tell you right now guys, you can thank me later. Um, when I first installed this, I uh, it automatically defaulted to full screen video. And so when I went into um, to turn on the cabinet mode and set up these screens, did some weird stuff. It would actually, most of the time it would actually crash. So I'd start trying to, especially with the DMD, if I start moving the DMD around with the new controls that they had, it just crash. Um, and it took me ages. First of all, I went into the settings file because there is a settings file guys and you can still go into that settings file uh, and you can change the settings manually. You just type them all in and set up your, your screens how you want. Um, and it's pretty easy to do uh, in terms of, of how the numbering works. It, it, effectively, if you look in Windows, you'll see your, your, your monitors, if you've got three monitors like I do have, have now. It depends how you've got them arranged in Windows, but effectively then it's a count from the left um, of those three monitors as your starting horizontal point, and then you just keep adding over to the next monitor. It, it makes a lot of sense when you actually see it and dial it in yourself but the key thing was the feature that they built in was to make it easier and so you could just move it up and down manually so long story short there because once I had actually dialed it in through the settings I was then getting flickering so if you guys get flickering um, during gameplay from the main screen to the bottom screen the solution and it took me like two hours to figure this out ding was to go into the video mode and change it from full screen exclusive to uh, full screen windowed, right? Um, and uh, you can have win borderless windows, right? So full screen borderless window is what you want to do and then that will allow the program to effectively write to, well, especially the, uh, the DMD. It's to throw up the back glass to start with, but it's constantly doing stuff with the DMD and you're not going to do that with full screen exclusive. So guys, <laughs> I tell you, and that was, that, that kicked off, yeah, that, that was the start of my journey um, where I then tried to get this seven inch uh, installed and then spent two days after grappling with all sorts of hardware errors that were unrelated to the screen itself. I'll share that stuff for all you raw and uncut guys, Patreon supporters, uh, and if you're not a Patreon supporter, consider becoming one and supporting Spaces Arcade as we go forward, and uh, you'll get all that extra content and some insights into the stupid things that I get myself into. 
So anyway, we'll leave that for another day. Important thing is, is that it's all set up. Now, once you have that borderless window set up, sure, knock yourself out, go into the controls, move your, your DMD and your, um, your back glass into position using the on-screen controls, super easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it wasn't initially, but it is now. Um, so anyway, so that that's sort of, and that's pr pretty much it in terms of the the current settings. Is really just to set up your DMD and position your back glass. Um, beyond that, I think, and I'm going to have to check this, guys, but I'm pretty sure it seems like camera settings are holding, which is good. So I think it was a a problem previously where you set a nice camera setting up uh, for your cabinet and then when you came back in you you know you'd lose that cabinet that setting so I don't think that's the case now other than that I am trying to recall any other cabinet features that are important from a software side of things yeah, so there is this problem still also of the cameras flicking into the animated modes, you know. When you're firing your plunger, uh, then the screen changes into, into this sort of animated mode. There are still some tables that when you hit a certain thing, one of them where it does a ball lock and it goes to that graphics. Even when, you've, when you turn all animations off in the settings, guys, it's still doing it. And... I think Zen needs to sort that out. In the cabinet mode settings itself, it should have an option to like turn off all uh, all of the 3D effects. And just, you know, you come into a table and the table's there like it is in, in real life. You play it in real life. It doesn't move around, you know, other than the little animation effects sometimes that happen. Um, uh, those things should still happen, of course. But you don't want the camera zooming in and out and just taking away from the effect. I think that should be an option though, because um, I do feel like uh, you know sometimes it is sort of sort of cool to see that stuff, and some people might like it. Which actually also gives me another reminder about another big problem that I see across all the tables anyway, and that is just the the lighting uh, and also the sound effects, guys. And especially I just found in the most recent tables the voice callouts. The volume of those are uh, all over the shop between different tables and I find myself, you know, well, especially with the voice stuff, I'm actually turning down a lot, it's way too loud, uh, but then other tables need to be sort of turned up a little bit and then Williams sound completely different, they're all different sound levels. The sound across all the tables is not good and a cabinet setup that's particularly problematic guys because sometimes it's just not easy to change the volume and you know normally if you're playing in a cabinet sort of setting and people are moving around between machines you can't have the volume going up and down all over the shop so that's not ideal um, the lighting is you know has been something I've banged on about in the past uh, I, I still feel like some you know some tables have got uh, much better lighting than others and I'm not sure if you know the other ones could be you know fixed up a little well I know some of them can be fixed up even just with moving moving gamma and there's a couple of tables guys that I'm, I, it really frustrates me because I was like I set the gamma for one and it's like uh, and then I go to another and it's too dark go to another and then it's too light and it's like <laughs> I'm moving stuff around so I don't know I you know ideally and this would this would be you know this is sort of almost like cabinet advanced mode is to have a selection where you could actually change lighting and individual sound for each table and if you also had the support for uh, the surround sound uh, the seven you know seven point one surround sound um, uh, for those for those effects then I think you you know you'd want to be able to dial those in differently probably for each table as well and, and be able to adjust them so that's you know that's quite a bit to ask for there but it's it's such a crucial part as well. That's that's the the, the challenging thing, uh, and it would really uplift the experience if you gave cabinet uh, users the ability to do that. I think the other thing when you actually finish a game again, you have that challenge where it sort of comes up to the you know the other screen and gives you your score and all the rest of it. Uh, again, that sort of just breaks everything. It, it, 
it'd be really nice if like all the high scores and everything came through on the DMD, you know, and again, you still had that fixed view and you didn't snap out of it and, you know, see the end score. So, you know, there's, again, there's quite a bit of programming differences there to how the program currently works. That would be very different, you know, from cabinet mode uh, to normal. But, you know, I'm just, I'm just shelling out my wish list here, guys. And, uh, you know, if, if all of these things were were addressed in some way, shape or form, uh, it would be, you know, be to totally awesome. And, you know, let's not forget that we do, you know, we do have some community efforts that do have all the features that I've talked about here. Uh, so it's not like it can't be done, um, but I'd realise this is a commercial operation, so it's going to be priorities in terms of uh, building in this sort of support. So guys, I think that's everything um, that I, we can talk about in terms of cabinet mode right now. Clearly a lot of really good functionality um, could be added uh, on top of the, the good base to at least get you started. And uh, I just, I, I do... It's, and I said, especially with the physics, and of course, it, look, we could talk about <laughs> this. Still, some subtleties in the physics, and there's subtleties in other areas, and people have challenges with um, performance and whatnot. I'm not going to talk about that in this video, guys. If you want other things that you want me to touch on and, and look at, uh, put them in the comments below, and I'll take a look at those things, areas of interest. Um, but you know, all the way through the early access, you know, we gave some thoughts initially. And then there were so many people getting involved with the early access support. And I, you know, I knew Zen's hands were full and just watching that sort of progress out. Now we've got to a release across all other platforms. And of course, we've got um, it in Steam as well. Like, I have to say, I think, you know, we do need to stop a little bit and just realize actually what a fantastic job. Zen has done and you know I'm not plugging them from the sake of uh, I do have an affiliation and relation they've given me the tables to um, to to use for free and that's uh, that's what I get from them but I always speak my mind and uh, hopefully provide constructive criticism but I will call out where they've done you know some excellent work guys and it, and it can't be it can't be easy and you think about the complexities of the software and across the tables and all the licensing stuff and all the things they had to think about from porting from one platform to another small studio dealing with the whole epic situation which you know commercially they may have had to do for whatever reason all of those challenges guys they've tripped up yeah sure along the way there's been some missteps so I felt they've always come back and attempted to, you know, do the right thing. Can't please everyone, you know. It's just, I, I can't, you know, say enough good things about them from all of those perspectives, you know. Even my last video, the title of it was, you know, Zen Stop This Hot Mess, right? And they're still open to come back and say, hey, Space, you want to do a, do a video when we release the Steam release, you know. Um, and that to me is 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 rare and I think we should you know again hats off to Zen for all the hard work that they've done all the challenges that they've had all the things that they've done to put that right the latest releases of tables just a flurry of tables um, I think we should also support everyone in the community and thank them for all of their assistance and actually contributing back to Zen and the forums to improve um, the software but guys, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And sometimes, you know, if you just step back from all of that, because it's really important to do that, so step back and just play some pinball, right? And just enjoy it. Because these tables, and especially these newer tables that are coming out now, although I can still go back to some of the originals now with the new physics and they still they blow me away. But new stuff's sensational. Um, you know what we what we're getting in terms of quality here is second to none and i you know even though i haven't paid for them and i know they are expensive because i look at it and i go well you know if i had to pay for each of those yeah they're expensive but there is a lot of value here there's there's a lot of entertainment and as we go through the tables guys of course part of all that rating you'll find out which ones are uh, the top of the list in relation to all those areas right down in terms of playability and, and uh, replayability um, So look out for that if you are, you know, thinking about which tables 
those videos will help as they come up in the future. So guys, we're going to leave it here and I'm looking to look forward to getting into those videos and start um, going through every single original table. The Williams tables I will get to um, and we'll do that at the end. You know, I've done so much before on Williams and I just feel like now's the time to get into the Zen Originals um, uh, and, and see and watch those things, watch those shine as they should do now they've got physics all updated and in a cabinet mode setting. And along the way, hopefully we get a little bit of some of the cabinet mode features added in and we can always come back and look at those specifically. Um, and again, anything else you want to see on the Pinball FX side, guys, just hit me up in the links below or head over to the Spacey's Discord forum and uh, be glad to have a chat with you there. All right, guys, well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informative and we'll see you on the next one. Ciao for now. <laughs> Fight like a robot. <laughs>